Yesterday I lost my mother. It's interesting. The day before yesterday, didn't feel good. I didn't feel tired. I didn't feel sick. I just did not feel well. I felt heavy. I went and ate, I wasn't hungry. I tried to sleep, I wasn't tired. I just didn't feel good. It was an interesting day. The next day I wake up, yesterday morning, I'm getting ready for the gym. I see Instagram, I got a, a call on Instagram from two people, two of my cousins. I'm like, oh. First thing I'm thinking is my mother because these are cousins on my mother's side. So I call one of my cousins. And he was trying to be gentle. He was nervous. I said, cousin, just tell me. Something on my mother? He said, yeah, man. Nobody knows what's going on. I call my aunt, Morel, who's like this with my mother. And there was a smell of death coming from her apartment. Security went in and there was my old girl. My mother wasn't sick physically, but my mother dealt with a lot of issues mentally, psychologically. To this day right now, the cause of death is unknown, but I'm pretty sure I know what it is. She is currently being examined by the medical examiner. Any minute, I'm getting a phone call, and they will give me the official words and the details. They'll release the body to me. We'll take her from Jacksonville down to Sanford, Florida, where all her family is and my family, and we will send my mother off with class. It looks like my mother overdosed on medication. My mother was on antipsychotic medication. It was something that she struggled with, schizophrenia. It was managed when she took her, her, her meds, but when she didn't, it was not. It was kind of scary. My mother was a very beautiful woman, very attractive woman. Her mother put her out when she was 15 years old, and my mother had to fend for herself. A little girl from Georgia all, ended up all the way in New York. Fast paced, big money, slick talkers. My mother had to do what she had to do to survive. She was not protected. I can't lie, I feel a way about her mother and her father for not protecting their daughter. But then it kind of like tell you how life is, how it's like you grow up, we all grow up with these ideas of this perfect dreamlike paradise of how things should be, but nothing's like that. It's a good concept. But in reality, life is a fucking jungle, it's a war. The things that I experienced as a child, and I blame a lot of this on my mother's parents, because my father's parents were awesome. They were like the rock in my family. They were so incredible. They made me feel love and warmth, root beer floats and onesie pajamas, what kids are supposed to experience. On the other side, it was chaos. Anyway, I saw my mother getting the shit beat out of her by her husband. It wasn't my father, it was her husband when I was little. And her father came this particular day. And I was excited. I was like, yeah, my granddaddy, won't, he, won't, he won't get him. I'm a little boy, I'm like seven, eight. You know what he did? He tried to reason with him. Come on, man, come on, man. And I have this concept, this theory, this thesis that to most people, money and violence is their God because they do anything for it. I just watched this man be okay with this fucking guy, this fucking demon, beating his daughter up in front of your grandson. And you try to reason with him and then you got him out of there. When I saw that as a kid, that shit made me want to be, to never, I felt so like helpless and weak. Like, I couldn't do nothing. 
I imagine me punching him and fighting him, but it'd be like ineffective, like nothing happened. I'm a little boy. I never wanted to feel like that again. That insecurity that I felt as a child made me want to be as strong as possible. Made me want to be a fighter, fight, kill. Made me want to like invoke fear in people, right? So nobody ever fuck with me or my people, you know? And I think it worked. It was an unlikely lesson, but that taught me something. It gave me a trajectory to try to just be strong and be powerful. Now, growing up, where I grew up, death happened all the time. So you learned that people don't really respect life like you would think that they do. You start to become desensitized to seeing dead bodies. You also got desensitized to the fact that a lot of times the killers don't go to jail, where I'm from. Then I come into like different friends, right? Some of them were so nice and kind when I met them, I didn't like them. I'm like, nobody's this nice. I thought it was fake, I thought it was a setup. However, through their persistence in dealing with me, I saw that they were genuine. That shit shocked me. I'm like, yo, people really are nice. They are wonderful people. Then I get to know them better, know more about them. Damn, they was raised like that, you know? And some people don't, are not raised in a chaotic environment like me. <laughs> and I admire that. I would never look at that as a weakness. I, I look at that as a power, a strength. And I applaud their parents. Because it all starts with the parents. Despite the chaos that my mother was forged in, she gave me really, really powerful attributes. My mother was, she had her own business doing home health care, right? So like hospice, so she took care of people. She was an angel. When I was little, when her husband died, you know, we were poor. So that's how she started her business. And we moved to Florida for a while. And um, she would have all of these jobs, all of these people to take care of. And she would take me with her. Or she did, not, she did not allow the streets to engulf me because we would, we were living smack dead in the middle of the projects. Anybody from Florida, Central Florida, know about Seminole County, you know about Sanford, Florida. If you know about Sanford, you know about a place called Bo Key. Bo Key, that was the projects. It's fucking horrible. Anyway, my mother, even though we were in the middle of it, my mother protected me from that. Like a, like a lioness protecting her cub, because the lion wasn't there at the time. You know, my family had a lot of deficit to dig out of, right? My mother got us out. You know, y'all hear me speak about my father often and, and the wisdom that he's given me and some of the dope attributes that I've gotten from him. I don't think I spoke about my mother enough though. My mother is the battery in my back. When I was young, I was an honor student, ballot Victorian every year. I played piano, saxophone, chess club, all of this was because of my mother. My mother would give me books to read, like way, like grade levels, multiple grade levels above where I was at. I started boxing at 12. My grandmother hated it. My grandmother said, you're gonna get punchy like Muhammad Ali. <laughs> my mother would look at these videos and like, get him baby, get him. Like she gave me that, mm, you know what I mean? So one time my cousin Sugar Bear, Elijah, that's what I named Elijah after. It's one of my best, it's my guy. We got in a, when he got in a fight. Sugar Bear is a beast, like, ain't nobody fucking with Bear. Scratch some cats up, we come back to the house, we, we young. My mother come out, 
one eye like low, like, what happened? We're talking through her teeth, that's scary. She's like, what happened? Sugar Bear got in the fight. She said, what you do? Nothing, he won. She's like, so? <laughs> My mother was a beast. She gave me that, that mentality, you know? So, I mean, you did a good job. You did a good job, you know? You know, families, we all are dependent upon who comes before us, our predecessors, you know? So if this is the baseline, you know, we starting down here, right? But my mom gave me enough juice to get, uh, uh, you know? And my kids get to start here. And that's a big thing, that's, a, that's key. So, you know, we off to something good because my mother's not gone. She's in me, which is in my children. And I ain't done having kids either, so we're gonna have more of my mother running around here, you know? Um, yeah, she, she done good. Her energy, her power is so pure. You know, it came through me in a very profound way. Very profound way, you know? And in business, you know, there's, there's like systems, right? That's like a, a good email funnel, sales funnel, like, you know, systems, but then there's magic too. And some people can get far on magic. That's the, the personality, the soul of, 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 a, of a business or a, a personality of a person or whatever. And my mother got so much of that, that magic and she gave it to me, you know? So my father was the systems guy, you know? So. Um, it's about having that combination, and I thank you, Mommy, for giving me that. I remember there was one guy, he was paraplegic. He was a nasty motherfucker. He just, his energy was just so evil, so dirty. Beer cans everywhere. My mother did not care. She was gentle with him, and she took care of that man, right? And I thought to myself, like, dang, that's an angel, because I couldn't do that, you know? She took good care of those people, right? And I learned a deep degree of kindness and love and being gentle from my mother. But on the flip side, my mother <laughs> had a lot of rage and anger and hatred in her. And the depth of her love and warmth, she had equal amounts rage and hate as above so below it's a law of correspondence so i was like mm. and i had all of that that she gave me early on in my life i expressed a lot of hatred a lot of violence a lot of emotional outbursts a lot of decisions based on emotion what did it give me it got me some respect in the streets, but it also got me incarcerated time and time again. It got me stressed. It made me paranoid, thinking about, I did this to so-and-so, so somebody gonna do that to me. It was a terrible way to live. After bumping my head so many times, I learned, and I started to control it, refine it, put it away, bring it out only if necessary. And I did that. And then later on in my life, as I got older, I had to learn the same thing with love. Love is an emotion. It's actually the same energy as hate. It's, it's this energy on opposite spectrums. You know, think about it. You can only really hate somebody that you love. Because other people, it doesn't matter. Who cares? But anyway, everything I feel is heavy. I'm very sensitive, so I feel it heavy. I just want to express it. Do anything for this woman, buy her anything, don't care. As I was getting to know her, I'm taking notes, asking questions, taking notes. Rent, shoe size, mom's birthday, whatever. And then whenever these days come up, I'm handling it. I knew everything, everything, everything. Boom, 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 just giving, 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 giving. And a lot of the giving is monetary. And some might say, well, that's just material. So what? 
everybody has their strengths, everybody has their powers, right? And if a man is giving something of monetary value, you can't say that's just materialistic or that's just money. Because that is a direct manifestation of hard work that that man had to put in, of value that that man had to give somebody to get that money in exchange. And he's giving it to you. So anyway, I was just giving, 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 doing, 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 doing. One of, my, one of my good brothers, he said, bro, he said, you've done more than, you bought her more stuff than I bought my wife. And I put things in perspective. And I trust and respect this man. That's a good man. I'm like, damn, you're right. But I was so deep in doing these things that it's hard to stop, right? And then you start creating a precedence that you can't just stop. You gotta keep that going. Now, we're both investing time in each other. I'm investing everything, right? So I was overlooking the red flags because we have red flags with each other, not very compatible. There were fundamental things that just would not work that I was overlooking because of all of the things. Because I'm doing all of this, I don't want to be wrong, you know? But that doesn't work. So that was a moment in which I really learned love is just as bad as hate. It could be if it's not checked. All that love, all that hate I got from my mother, right? And it's a good thing, but it has to be refined. It has to be checked. I always tell people like, when y'all see me as a beast, like physically or even just, even in business, whatever, all that energy, that passion comes from my mother. Doesn't come from my father. My father gave me, my father's an intellectual. He's a smooth guy. But that life that I have, that how, how tenacious I am, come from my mother. You know, people were afraid, people were scared of my mom. But my mom was gentle and sweet, but she had all of that. She was a huge dichotomy. My mother's gone. And the thing that her ascending is not what's painful. The fact that she ascended alone is what bothers me. Because I have this fairy tale, fantasy idea of death, or what we call death, of one dying comfortably at home, surrounded by their loved ones, you know? And that's actually what all of the actions of my life is predicated upon the day that I die. So it really bothers me that my mother did not, or were not surrounded by love, by her loved ones, you know. I, um, I wanted to move my mother to California to live with me so she could be with her grandchildren myself, but I was being selfish. I was like, ah, I'm gonna have to deal with my mother every day, all day. I love my mother. I love everybody in my family, but only in doses. I can't only deal with everybody in doses. Short bursts, you know? But that was selfish and that was stupid. And I wish that I did things different, you know? But here we are. Shit hit different, man. Like, my brother Amir lost his mother a couple years ago. I ain't what to say. I couldn't imagine that, you know? And here I am. And I, my mother was healthy. I had a dream one time. I remember it vividly. It was a nightmare. It was the first nightmare I ever had. We had just moved to Florida. We was there not long. And we were in an apartment complex called Shenandoah Village. I remember this. And it sucked. I hated it. Culture shock. I didn't like the school. Um, and I had a dream that my mother had passed away. 
not in her bed, but on the side of her bed. And in the dream, she woke up out of her death, her death to pay some bills, to take care of a few things, make sure everything was situated. And then she lay back down on the side of her bed and went back to sleep or to death. That bothered me. I woke up and I couldn't sleep for like two days. You know? I don't know why I had that dream back then, but I did. And then I had a lot of like deep dealings with my mother. One time when I moved from my mother to, I moved to Arizona as a young man, 18, 19. She and I were on the phone and she was saying, I'm in pain, damn, I'm in pain. She was having this real bad migraine. And she was saying it in such a way, it made me feel so bad. Like, I wish I could take that headache from her. A few minutes later, or I'm not sure how long, how much longer later, I had a bad headache. I'm like, where did I get this headache from? I called my mother. Mommy, how you feeling? She said, I'm good. I'm like, how's your headache? She was like, it's gone. I'm like, damn. I took my mother's headache. Another time, my mother will always say, I don't, she would say things very emphatically, and I just never questioned it, and it would come out to be true. She said one time, I don't care where you are in the world, if I need to find you, I'll come find you. I'm like, okay. I get locked up in Jacksonville. I'm, I don't know where I'm at, right? I don't know if I'm, when I'm getting out, nothing, right? So, I couldn't tell nobody when I was getting out. I didn't know when I was getting out. I ended up getting kicked out after like two weeks. And uh, one of my boys came to get me, who lived in Jacksonville. And we go to like some girl he was hanging out with her apartment. I don't even know this girl. I don't even know where these apartments are. I walked outside just for some fresh air. And someone was like, look to the left. I look. There's a car I don't know, but it felt familiar. Lo and behold, it's my mother in the rental car. She didn't say nothing else in there. I was getting in the car. We drove on home to Sanford. Pain makes you strong, right? Stress strengthens you to an extent. So she was deep. She said a lot of deep things. She said a lot of things that I didn't understand. And I never asked her questions about. And you know, it's funny because there's things that she said that I always wanted to ask her, like, what did you mean by this or that? I never got to ask her. But anyway, mommy, if you can hear me, I love you. And I'm sorry. That wasn't a better son. I'm sorry that I didn't move you to California. I was being selfish. I promise you that I will rededicate my life and all my focus and my energy on being extremely present and available for our family and the people that need me the most. I'll do that for you, mommy. That's it.